Yeah, Natasha, I guess you can take it over from now. Okay, perfect. Uh, let me just get set up here. Okay. All right. Okay, can everyone see my screen? I can't see any of you anymore, so. Yes. Perfect, okay. Yes. Um, so, hello everyone. Um, bonjour à tous. Hola a todos y todas. My name is Natasha Forte, and I'm a project coordinator on the scholarships team here at Global Affairs Canada. And I'm pleased to present to you my first CHI session titled um, Empowering Academic Institutions to Create Strategic Linkages. And one way that we do this is through an annual networking event called the eLab Collaboration Mission, which is the subject of my presentation today. Uh, donc, uh, bonjour tout le monde. Uh, Aujourd'hui, cette présentation va se dérouler en anglais, mais uh, je serai capable de prendre des questions, des commentaires en français. And so before I get started, I wanted to quickly do a uh, poll. Um, so I don't know, Suraha, if you could uh, start the poll with the first question and the second question. Yes. Awesome. Let's see here. I can take a look quickly. OK, this is great. Okay, we've got a few no's. Can I launch okay, we'll give it another. Yeah, okay. Okay, we can move on to the next one then. I will launch. Thank the you results. for answering. I'll share the results. Yeah. Very good. Oh, I have to share the results? Yeah. No, I did. Oh, sorry. Launch the... <laughs> okay, I'll stop sharing. I'll go in for the second one now. Yes. All right, so we've got a second question here for you. Okay, we've got a bunch more no's. Wow. <laughs> okay. 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 So, we so we've got. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is very interesting. Okay, so I see uh, 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 there's a fair amount of you that haven't heard of the collaboration mission before. So this is this is good luck for everyone here today. <laughs> um, okay, great. So we'll save the last poll for at the end, but I'll, I'll move on now. Uh, okay. All right, perfect. So let's get started. Let me quickly go through the agenda. So first of all, I'm just going to talk about the International Scholarship Program, the objectives and how we're achieving them. Next, I'm going to move on to the collaboration mission. So I'm going to talk about its objectives, an overview of this event, um, the benefits, uh, how to apply, so on and so forth. Then I'm going to briefly touch on what we've been able to achieve in 10 years of doing this collaboration mission, followed by a panel discussion with uh, two of our two previous participants, and then we're going to do a Q&A from the audience. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so Global Affairs Canada has an international scholarship program, but and I'm going to run through some of the objectives we have here. So firstly, we know that Canada is a place where students can get a high quality education in a safe and diverse environment, which is why we want to promote Canada's academic excellence abroad. Secondly, we want to diversify the countries from which international students come from, as well as their fields and levels of study and where they study within Canada. We want to try to get students to study outside of the big cities like Toronto and Montreal and get them into more rural areas. Thirdly, we want to help our Canadian post-secondary institutions advance their 
internationalization agendas. Fourth, we want to create reciprocal opportunities for Canadians to study and do research abroad. And lastly, develop human capital in some priority countries. And so the way we achieve these objectives is through our scholarships and some related events. In total, uh, we have eight different programs. However, I'm only going to highlight a few here. First, we have the Emerging Leaders in the Americas program. This is our oldest program, and I see most of you from the, from the poll uh, know about it. And um, so it's over 10 years old, and since 2009, we've had over 5,000 students participate. Then we also have the Canada CARICOM Faculty Leadership Program and our newest one, the Skills Training for the Green Economy, which is specific for the college sector. And so the way our program runs is there needs to be a memorandum of understanding or an agreement in place between both institutions. And this is where the collaboration mission comes in. It's an annual networking event that has two objectives. The first is to create a platform to facilitate the development of partnerships and agreements between uh, our Canadian education institutions and their Latin American and Caribbean counterparts. The second is to increase these stakeholders' participation in ELAP by increasing existing participation of old players, but also seeking to bring new players uh, into the program. And the way our scholarships work is for, for the student exchange component, we require a tuition waiver in the agreements. However, the collaboration mission is not just about tuition waivers or, or ELAP, it's more than that. We leave it up to the institutions to develop partnerships and agreements that align with their objectives, whether it be you know, faculty exchange, research, uh, training. So I just want to touch on some of the benefits on both sides there are to participating uh, in the mission. So for our Canadian institutions, it's a great opportunity to showcase their, their cutting edge programs, their state of the art research facilities and labs. It's also a chance to find uh, new institutional partners to collaborate with on research projects, another way to achieve their interna internationalization objectives. And for our Latin American Caribbean friends, it's a great opportunity to learn about the Canadian education system, how to navigate partnership building here, uh, to, to tour these Canadian institutions and explore partnerships with them. In addition, it's also a chance to connect uh, with Latin American and Caribbean institutions uh, among themselves. We've noticed in past missions, since the delegates spend uh, many days together, we've seen them sign agreements amongst each other as well. And lastly, it's also uh, a good opportunity to create reciprocal opportunities for students on both sides, for Canadians to study abroad uh, and also for Latin American students to study in Canada. Okay, so let me quickly touch on what the mission is. So the people we're looking for are staff and faculty from post-secondary institutions in ELAP eligible countries and territories. And for the in-person mission, it lasts 10 days and it happens in November. And the value of this grant that we're offering at Travel, it covers the flight from to and from Canada, as well as the hotel, the food, uh, the transportation, and a conference ticket as well. And every year we choose between 16 to 20 delegates and we do a number of activities. Of course, uh, due to the pandemic, the mission has been online for the past two years in an altered format. Uh, however, we hope to have it in person again next year uh, if the situation permits. And the difference with the virtual one is instead of a, it being a 10-day immersive event, uh, the mission is broken down into several virtual presentations, networking events, one-on-one -on -one meetings with Canadian post-secondary institutions, over the course of a few weeks leading up to the annual CBIE conference, which I will touch on later. I'd like to also say that with the virtual mission, we've been able to do things that we haven't been able to do in person, such as explore uh, interesting institutions in more remote areas that would have been challenging to see in person. Okay. So uh, I'd love to uh, walk you through how a collaboration mission unfolds uh, through a collection of photos uh, from the past missions. 
And for so when for the in-person format, when the delegates arrive to Canada, they they settle into their hotel, and the next day there is an orientation session, and that will prepare them for the rest of the mission. The session it familiarizes them with the Canadian education system, the role that Global Affairs Canada has in this event, and also a chance for delegates to familiarize, uh, introduce each other. And so this is this collaboration mission. The photos from 2017 and started in Victoria, BC. Then throughout the mission, uh, delegates, they have a chance to visit a number of uh, Canadian colleges and universities where they have where they can tour campuses. The Canadian uh, institutions give presentations. There's networking with potential partners to learn more about where they can collaborate. And this is a photo of a presentation the University of British Columbia did on their sustainability initiatives. <laughs> In addition uh, to the tour, uh, the campus tours, there's also lab tours. And here on the top left, we have a lab tour from Dalhousie. And then on the right, we have uh, the Southern Alberta Institute for Technology. And on the bottom left, left we have uh, another lab tour at the University of Victoria uh, with Dr. Stephanie Will Willard who's a leader in the field of biomedical uh, engineering. So the collaboration mission, it goes all across Canada. You can start in one part of Canada and finish at the completely other part by the end. And so there's different ways that we'd, we'd take the delegates across Canada through a plane, through a bus, um, through trains or even ferries. And I really like this photo because it kind of gives a great example of the beautiful landscape that can be seen when, when you visit. So in addition to the campus tours and the networking, we also want to show them a little bit of Canadian culture. And so during the missions, we've, we've uh, shown the delegates different points of interest. This is a photo of the Canadian Human Rights Museum, which the delegates visited in uh, 2019 in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Other things delegates can do are city tours, uh, you know, they visited Niagara Falls, they visited various museums, and even attended Remembrance Day ceremonies. And so the mission culminates or uh, with attending the annual conference for the Canadian Bureau of International Education. This is a well-known conference where delegates have the chance to network with even more Canadian institutions, but also international delegates. People from all over the world come to this conference and they'll be able to attend various uh, sessions and panel discussions. In addition, Global Affairs Canada gets an exclusive uh, session at the conference every year where our delegates will be able to participate in a speed networking event with their Canadian counterparts, again, with that goal of creating more partnerships. And so at the end of the mission, we, we, we wish our delegates farewell. We provide them with a certificate and we send them back home, hopefully with a few new agreements in their pockets. And uh, during the 2017 mission, these delegates, they visited eight institutions, one research institute across five different cities and attended a conference within 10 days. They had been to Victoria, they'd been to Vancouver, Calgary, Ottawa, and Halifax. Okay, so I've shown you a collection of photos. I've, I've talked about the mission and I'm sure you're wondering, okay, Natasha, where do I sign up? <laughs> and I'd be happy to explain that to you. Um, so each year, the collaboration mission, it's centered around a unique theme. Some years it's been the green economy, other years it's been STEM, otherwise as uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. And this year, it's going to be about the information communication technologies. We also choose a sector, whether we want to focus on colleges, universities, or both. And so once we've chosen a theme, we do a, a call for proposal to find interested candidates. So we send out an email telling uh, to, through our network, letting them know uh, what the theme is, you know, what Canadian institutions are gonna be participating to find out whether it's gonna be a good fit. And so those that are interested, they reply, they say, hey, I wanna join. And we send them an application form to fill out. And once we've received all those forms, we screen and approve the candidates. We let everyone know the selection results. 
and we sign those agreements. Um, and this call for proposals is usually done in the summer. And so if you're interested in joining next year, uh, please send our scholarship administrator, CBIE, an email. Their contact information is going to be at the end of the presentation. As well, I want to just touch on some tips on what makes a good application. First and foremost, it's always a good idea to completely fill out the form. Um, and what we're looking for in the application is whether your institution is a good fit for the theme, whether the participant has the ability to execute, if not sign, agreements, although we understand that may not always be possible. And we also want to see how uh, the institutions demonstrate how they want to increase those partnerships and advance their internationalization objectives in relation with the collaboration mission. Okay, so in 10 years, what have we been able to do? I'd like to share a few stats here. Uh, so we've been able to have over uh, 270 delegates from over 230 different institutions in Latin America and the Caribbean. And on the Canadian side, we've had over 70 Canadian colleges and universities participate. And in total, over 100 partnerships have been uh, created uh, during the uh, mission or, or immediately afterwards. Okay, so I'm, I'm pleased to move on to the panel uh, discussion period, and I'm happy to introduce our two panelists. First, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Nadine Campbell. She is a Director of Corporate Community Relations and Strategic Partnerships at Northern Caribbean University in Jamaica. Um, she has worked with NCU for over 18 years, and Ms. Campbell holds a master's degree in media, governance, and democracy from the University of Leicester in England. And she's also a two-time collaboration mission participant in 2019 and 2020. Then we have uh, Maria Luisa Ferran Estevan. She's a director at Institutional uh, Mobility at INTEC. She's worked with INTEC for 20 years and has worked many years in uh, education and international, internationalization topics. Uh, she holds a master's degree in organizational leadership from Nova Southwestern University. She's also part of the team that developed INTEC's uh, internationalization policy and promoted the first national mobility program between five local universities. And finally, she's been a two-time mission participant in 2011 and 2020. So I'm excited to both have you here today to speak. Um, let me just kind of switch things up. I'm going to just stop sharing for a minute while we while we do this. So, and I invite you both to please unmute your microphones. Um, so thank you both. Uh, so I have, a, I have some questions here for you I'd love to ask today. Um, so first, why don't you just give us a brief uh, introduction focusing on some of your strengths and flagship uh, achievements. I'll, I'll let you go first, Nadine. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, uh, Northern Caribbean University is a liberal arts institution. Um, it was founded 114 years ago. So during the Spanish flu, we were very much around um, in the early, yeah, in the 1907 region onward. Um, and it's uh, it's a Seventh-day Adventist institution, um, faith -based. In 1999, the government of Jamaica granted um, the what was then West Indies College University status. And in 2018, NCU received institutional accreditation um, from the University Council of Jamaica, which enjoys ISO certification. Therefore, certification is granted by NCU, is recognized um, internationally, and all of our programs are accredited. Um, it's a values-based institution which promotes a strong work ethic and um, a service culture. Uh, the faculty and students have distinguished themselves in applied research, in plant-based nutritional products, environmental management, and innovation in science and technology. The university really has participated in, in many things. Um, we have um, participated in the launch of Jamaica's newest nutraceutical product called the Zontisan, which, and that's Z-O-N-T-E-A-S-A-N. Um, it resulted early scientific investigations by NCU researchers on a ginger-like plant. Um, um, it's now patented as the McGee Jamaican Cinnamon Ginger in the US, Canada, and 27 European countries. 
laboratory tests have shown that extracts from this particular ginger-like cinnamon tasting, it really smells like cinnamon, um, it kills cancer cells. That's not an established fact. So let's talk a little more about our first place victories in many things, in competitions with our students. Um, in the Microsoft Imagine Cup in 2007, 2010, um, where we were the international business model competition winners in 2018. And now business model competition winners from 2014 when that competition started in Jamaica right through to 2017 and our girls in ICT Caribbean hackathon competition NCU um, was the 2017 and 2018 um, I could go on you know but you know we're the national science <laughs> competition champions in 2019 and with our internationally diverse faculty our faculty come from all over the world so do our students um, our campus is really conducive to hosting cultural exchanges at whatever level, undergrad, grad, and we just welcome anyone who wants to participate with us. That's NCU in a nutshell. Oh, thank you so much, Nini. Maria Luisa. Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos que estén aquí. Nice to see you, everyone, everywhere, every, everyone, and hope to have new friends before uh, after this conference well i want to tell you about my institution instituto tecnologico de santo domingo in tech it's a younger let's see let's talk about younger because it's only they're going to have 15 years the next year uh, we are str a strong thing at in tech for be very quickly <laughs> we are we have Offer innovative undergraduate and graduate programs in our country. Be one of the few universities with trimester university. We are, we are like Caribbeans, like Nadine. We don't need summer, summer programs. We have class all the years and have emphasis in engineer, science, and technology. No matter if you see Instituto Tecnologico of Santo Domingo, we have the first medical school in Dominican Republic who have international accreditation. Uh, we, we are the first institution in Dominican Republic who have the first academic patent uh, in tech. When they begin to be in tech, immediately we think in research. And that's why our institution immediately, part of the budget or of institutional things is, so sorry, my English, <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> it's in okay. for research. If, puedo hablar en español también, si algunos lo entienden. Uh, they try to invert a lot of money to motivate and to do research as, at the institution. Uh, we have at the institution, we have engineers, we have business, we have health, we have education, we have math, we have everything. We are smaller, but we work so with a lot of topics at the university. Uh, we have approximately 5,000 students divided the five we call faculty we call areas. Area. Um, one thing in tech always think we, is not only to academic, to teach, we also have centers, center of gender, health, center of education, center of environment, center of entrepreneurship, who work with a specific topic to give solution to the, to the country. Um, well, anything you think we can provide about my university, I'm here. <laughs> That's excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Maria Luisa. So my next question for you both is, uh, I'd like to know what was the state of your international collaboration before the collaboration mission itself? Um, I'll, let, <laughs> I'll let you go first, Edie. <laughs> oh, okay, Sorry to well, pick on No problem, no problem. Okay, well, before we, um, before, before the collaboration mission, uh, we mostly partnered with two universities 
in the US, um, namely um, Andrews University and Washington Adventist University, in terms of formal um, MOUs and um, um, agreements. And most of these collaborations focused on joint research and offering joint degree programs, um, and any other collaboration would have been one-off activities with um, organizations that are not necessarily academic. Um, um, so we really, though, 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 though a university that has a wide, uh, maybe 40 countries represented in our student body, our international collaborations in terms of formal, really was not there um, before CM. Um, so, so I'm just going to park it right there. Before CM, our international co collaborations in terms of with academic institutions really was just two. Um, many of the other collaborations would have been internal within our region, within the country, but not external to Jamaica. And um, that's it. And I think you, you had said before, in our previous discussions, a lot of your exchanges were through this faith-based network, as you said, they were, um, Absolutely. there wasn't like a hard MOU, right? No hard MOUs. And we would have students coming from all over the world, again, because they would go online looking around for um, institutions that are Seventh-day Adventist universities globally. And we would have students without any kind of specific marketing targeting their area would come from, as I said, 40, 40 odd countries, from Croatia, from all over Africa, the continent of Africa, from all over South America, from, from the Dominican Republic, from all over the Caribbean, from the North America, Europe. Um, so they would, they would just come. But our program for formal collaborations were, was really just launched in 2019 when my department um, was established the Strategic Partnerships Office. And so we are now just really on our way, though we have been international in scope for many years. Yes. Okay, thank you. And what about you, Marilisa? In case of Intech, Intech is an institution that has been always working into the international, internationalization standard. You know, all institutions have to work to see what it not only regions or national thing is happening is see what happened out of the country how the other institution is working how is how is the flu every every everything because we are we are we are formed the future professional to have a global vision that's why it's for intake is not only not only to to work with exchange we always try to work with academic, uh, the actualization academic scenes, with, re with research. We put in contact the faculty, the research, the administration staff who want to know how the things happen out of the country. Because if you want to be a real internationalization institution, you have to work inside, we'll be, uh, see the example outside, and try to adapt those good things or good practice in the at the institution. In tech, always is working, and every year we are trying to see okay, what we're going to do for strong or for uh, fortalice, fortalice, so sorry, this topic. How do you how we can work and I'm telling you, we use a lot of those collaboration we have with a lot of partners out of the world. We receive a lot of students, yes. We receive a lot of faculty, yes. But one thing we want to, we try to do with this topic of collaboration is be strong for the country and for the region. Because like a region, every, every, everybody saw us like a tourist or baseball. So sorry, Nadine, we have baseball. <laughs> <laughs> not like education and it's the only way we can transmit to the other country that we have a good and quality education in our country okay so were you are you saying as well sometimes you had difficulty attracting institutions to intech from yes. international ones yes oh, i see i see it's so difficult for us because we don't have program in english Okay. And another, a lot of institutions want to send uh, want to want to send a student, but they don't have the competence in Spanish. 
we are working in that. Um, for my other friends here, don't worry, my student and my, my faculty don't talk English like me, but I try to come up with my idea, my idea. And we are working right now with some, some courses, a specific courses for those students and faculty who want to come to do, to do something and in tech. But for example, one strategy we use for master and for PhD students, no matter if they don't know anything in Spanish, they can come to Intech and we put a professor or faculty who can follow totally in English your, and help in anything they need. We have mm -hmm. barrier mm -hmm. with the language, we know that, but, but we are working to, those barriers don't, don't be the, the, the stock or good relation with Canadian or the other world institution. Oh, perfect. Thank you, uh, Maria Luisa. So I, I'd also like to know, so you both part to say, how did you find out about the collaboration mission and uh, what made you want to apply? I'm going to, uh, you can start this time, Maria Luisa, go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, yeah, my friend, my mom, I got to tell something. My mother always told me, I'm so curious. I always push when we want to get something. And one thing I always make is in, at the office, we immediately, it's like a spy, check at the, <laughs> at the page of the Canadian government, check what opportunity we have, uh, they have for like institution for us. Immediately, I saw this opportunity, immediately, okay, let me see, what is that? I call to the embassy and I ask, what is that? How we can motive, how how can I participate like institution? And one of my, my vice rector, two years before of me, participated in the a lab mission. But you know, sometimes when the so sorry, maybe I don't want to offend anybody if we have vice rector here, but some sometimes with the when the information is up, they forgot to go down those information. When the vice rector come, immediately I know he was there. I asked, could you tell me how is? Could you tell me what we what we what we can do for be part of those a lot a, a lot a mission? I sent a lot of email and at least in a one time so okay Maria Lisa, you're going to give the opportunity that you can come here and be part of the of this mission. The thing is one point you have to be alert you have to be focused you have to get the information look for the information because sometimes the information don't don't going to come to you you have to look for the information Nadine? sorry uh whoops sorry i was having difficulty there yeah go ahead go ahead oh oh uh okay uh well um for for me, um, prior to twenty nine, prior to twenty eighteen November, I did not know anything about ELAP. Did not know anything about the CM, and I'm now answering the question: How did I find out about um, ELAP and the collaboration mission? Yeah, yeah, correct. Okay. Um, uh, right, a colleague of 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 mine from a university in Jamaica someone who was a graduate student when I was doing my first degree, is a professor at Brandon University. And mm -hmm. Brandon University was, as with many of the Canadian universities, have been reaching out to territories near and far for relationships. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm a geographer, um, a natural scientist. And as a result, that professor knew that I was at NCU um, along with another colleague of mine who we were both in the same university prior to NCU. And he contacted us, had the International Affairs Activities Director from Brandon request a visit to NCU. Mm. And therein began our first first page of ELAP and, mm. and, and, and thereafter the CM. So our first MOU was with this Canadian university, Brandon University, and Brandon University basically introduced us to the landscape of 
ELAP. Um, mm-hmm. And within, within no time, um, as I said, I found out about it in November um, and I heard about the, the applications in February for students um, going, um, applying to benefit from the ELAP program. And we jumped on board, though I don't have a team yet to deal with it, but we jumped on board and we had our mm-hmm. we had some students being selected for the the elap program and as a result of that and their stewardship at brandon we now had a cohort of students who had benefited from elap and they were invited to be part of the elap the collaboration mission in 2019 and so that was when my eyes really opened i mean i'm like before i was blind and now i can see um really <laughs> was an absolutely eye-opening experience and it fitted in with the university now formally launching, NCU formally launching its desire for internationalization and formally opening mm-hmm. up itself to having partnerships with universities in Canada and in other parts of the world. And we're particularly excited about the Canada reality because of how the Canadian government has structured its, its, its international education agenda facilitating students coming from Canada, from Jamaica to Canada, and now as well from Canada into the Caribbean. So we are really looking forward to um, open up. My first collaboration mission opened me up to so many um, universities and colleges and institutions, and we were able to um, now start on the road to structured partnerships, having visited many of these places. And it really has been a a, a wonderful process. That's excellent. Thank you so much, Nadine. Sorry. (laughs) Following the things Nadine Nadine is tell about the agreement with your institution. In our case, the first, uh, at first time, we only sent one student from one institution, we have two agreements. When I participate, I we get 12 agreements because one student was the embassy to open the opportunity to all the institutions who want to do something with our university. And one thing for the for the Latin American university, you have to have in your hands and ask to the Canadian University what they need from us or what thing we think we can strengthen because it's not only to send, to send, to send, to send, <laughs> no. It's, this is an, a project to be part of, to do something together for both mm-hmm. institutions, not only one time. Yeah, see, I, I hear what you're saying on wanting to, to, to push that reciprocity. Absolutely. I'd love to move on to the next question, though, talking about some of the benefits uh, the, collaboration, the collaboration mission has brought to your institution. Um, for example, would you like to highlight uh, one something about the mission, whether it was a visit to a facility or presentation or, or something like that? Uh, Is there is there a highlight you'd like to share, either of you? Or <laughs> um, okay, um, I there are so many. You know, uh, there is always that challenge. Um, I don't know if I could merge. I don't know if I could merge two into one. But when we visited um, University of Manitoba, uh, mm-hmm. the, the the cancer research agenda there was so strong that um, I was really quite impressed. And we went through and got tours of all of the labs and, and, and you name it. And at NCU, cancer research is something that we're very strong on. Um, we're known nationally for doing research in nutraceuticals and bringing like sorrel, um, it's a drink, a, a, a hibiscus relative, sorrel, ginger, so many other things to, to, to the fore that is helping with cancer. And um, the, the leader who has a very heavy portfolio at um, Sabine at University of Manitoba and I have been working together, bringing our researchers together. And that is such an exciting journey because we are doing quite a lot on a particular level. When I listen to the scientists speaking, I had to smile. Um, we are doing a lot in the Caribbean and in, in this side of the world 
on um, uh, dealing with a particular aspect of cancer research, but we were not dealing heavily with the imaging side and to, to, to compare things. So this marriage is coming together beautifully and um, we are about to sign an MOU um, or not a, 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 an agreement for joint research, joint publications, you name it. That would not have happened had I not gone to on the CM, had I not gone to University of Manitoba, had I not met Sabine, had I not reached out and she reached back. I know our, our scientists, we have a lot of um, cancer researchers at NCU, um, they are now work, getting ready to work really closely together to help to save the world and save us all from the purge of cancer. <laughs> Wow, that's 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 a lovely story and highlight. Thank you so much. Well, after after my participation in the lab, the lab for me, for my institution, is an open a, a window to do a lot of things. And one of the things the in that first year was to receive a group of students from Niagara College who come here with the teacher because they want to do something with a cafe talita, a coffee song, but they immediately, we try to immediately put something together that they can come to the, to the Intec state and Intec one, we see what we are doing, talk with the student and we prepare one week Spanish Dominican Spanish, because it's so special, Dominican Spanish uh, course for survival. And after, after these uh, special programs, the student continue to be in contact with us and with the student. Some faculty are write us to see others, not only for uh, coffee, coffee maker scenes, it's also for chocolate for something, some other topics. And um, one mm. thing this year is fast with Algoma University, one of the our partners, is that we mm. develop a COVID programs. One professor from or a group of students from Intech together uh, one professor for Algoma develops a topic with archaeology on um, Aboriginal seals. We don't have Aboriginal in Dominican Republic, we, but we have the history and we can present and they talk and make a so great work with this, with this, uh, with this project. And thanks for this, this kind of uh, programs, lab programs. Lab programs open the, open not only for exchange, I repeat, not only for exchange students, you can, have more vision to do something different, to be creative. Mm -hmm. The situation motivate to all of us to be creative and to do something. Not, for example, we make a coffee with a partner and we try to have a meeting with a lot of partners to see how we are. When we have, when we want to see a good practice and talk, how do you do? Oh, so interesting because we have to be open to some suggestion. That's great. Thank you so much, Maria. We're going to be running out of time, Sue, so I'm going to see if I can get through some of the last few questions. So it seems from what you've mentioned already that you attended the mission, you networked, and you know you also, as a result, you received some interest in your institution you by by accent, uh, not by accent, sorry, but uh, through the coffee trip, and and they did their language, did some language training there. Uh, and, and so I just want to know, can you tell me how many agreements you've been able to sign? Maybe you mentioned it before in total with the mission. In my case, we have uh, 19. 19, wow. Okay. Wow. What about you, Nini? Well, the new kid on the block, um, um, <laughs> we, have, uh, we have one, two, three, we have three formally signed agreements um, um, from the mission with about six in process. Um, <sighs> So um, this would be sort of phenomenal for me, having just started on the ELAP CM um, journey. And um, that's a blessing. One thing that's we are great. working, 
one thing we are working right now with those agreements is not only half agreement for half agreement. We want to agreement with activity. And that's why uh, through the Canadian, well, uh, Natasha present, we have faculty, you have a Canadian have faculty, faculty exchange program. And we are trying to say to those faculty or, or partner, hey, come here, teach something here, totally in English, we are open. And you can apply with these programs that the that Edu, Education Canada offer to you. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes mm -hmm. we think, oh, a lot of agreement, but we have to have agreement with activity, no half agreement for nothing. It's my recommend, my recommenders. Mm, okay, perfect. I'm gonna I have one last question for you guys and then we'll move on to the QA period with the audience. Um love to know if you have any advice you would like to share with your Latin American Caribbean colleagues on how to apply or how to maximize their participation in the mission. Go ahead, Nadine. Okay, um well uh the so far I have been um I've shown interest. Um, when our trade commissioner in, in, in Jamaica um, made the ELAP CM um, window um, available, so we became aware, um, and then we applied um, as an institution with me being the head of strategic partnership, whoever your international, um, your international activities or strategic partnerships person is, um, you, you send in, you fill in the forms, you send in the required information, and, and then you, you get feedback that you have been selected or not, you know, to, to, to mm -hmm. be part of it. Um, I've been thankfully been able to be part of it on two occasions. My first in-person visit, because that was 2019, by the time I got to 2020, it was virtual, is I, I observed those who were seasoned at it and realized that it, it, it really have to have a structured system. You, 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 when, you, when you get to Canada, um, no virtual or in, in, in person, is to have a real flight plan that you, as you get the information, as you go on, on um, visit the institutions and as you in, encounter the different professionals and the different persons in charge of international um, of, um, activities to you know, take your contact information and follow up immediately. In fact, if you can be sending your emails and your follow-up information while you're on the bus going to the next location, I learned that, um, as I observed, I was, I was so overwhelmed by the wonderful things I've seen that I now realize that that structured approach will help you. Um, the ELAP CM will expose your institution to so many entities and you will start to create your own relationship. It allows for relationships to be formed between the institutions, from the Caribbean and Latin America, um, who are part of that CM court at the time, and for that follow, -up. and and also the whole development of an alumni of CM participants. So those who were mm -hmm. 2019 and 2020 cohorts, they're no persons who are part of my 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 family circle, uh, because we are bonded during our togetherness. The 15 or 20 persons who are brought together, and. Um, it, it really does help to build cross relationships with Latin America for, for us in the Caribbean and with other Caribbean entities, uh, in addition to the entities that we would have visited. Wow, thank you so much, Nadine. Quickly, Maria Luisa, I'm sorry, I don't want to rush okay. you here, but. Communication in academic and research term with Canadian institution is a solid point of preference. You have to have a plan and you have to communicate it. Um, to be clear that this is not a uh, magic, immediately the thing going to pass. No, <laughs> you have, you have, you, you have to be constant. You have to be determined. Oh, no. You have to have positive visions for the reserve because the progress mm -hmm. is going to be a step like a, a step by a step. It's like I always say this, uh, this kind of. This kind of relation is like when you have, oh, this girl or this boy is so good. Let me see how I can convince this person. You have to do the same step by step and see and information, have a lot of information and communicate it. Try to, one question, if you need, if you need some suggest, 
see other people, talk with other people who have experience in this kind of process because the process is so difficult. No, it's not difficult. It's so good. Mm -hmm. And the result you're going to see is so sweet. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Maria Luisa and Nadine, for working with me on this presentation and, and sharing your feedback today. I, I, I'm sure I hope that everyone found it valuable and learned a bit more and maybe spiked some interest in the mission. Um, so we, we only have uh, about eight minutes remaining. I'd love to take some questions from the audience. But before I do, I have a question uh, for you all of you here. Um, I have one last poll I'd love to do. Uh, Suraha, there you go, awesome. So, you know, based on what you've heard today, would any of you be interested in joining? Hmm. Well, hopefully, yeah, I, would, I guess that's, always, that's a good sign on my part. I've done a good job. <laughs> uh, uh, um, awesome. So I, I kind of looked through the chat briefly, and I saw one question from uh, Carol Salahan, and she asked, uh, does the Canadian institution need to be a member of CBIE to participate in the mission? That's a no, no, you don't have to be a member of CBIE. Um, any Canadian institution can uh, apply to participate. Um, let's see. That's all I'm seeing right now. So please, if you'd like to ask some questions, feel free to turn on your microphone and uh, camera. And uh, you know, en France, aussi en français, je peux prendre une question en français, comme vous voulez. Je ne sais pas si je dis. Donc, uh, or the school. Or the school in Espanol, no importa. <laughs> that as well. Thank you so much. Um, and while the questions are being considered, one of the blessings of the ELAP CM and ELAP program is really it facilitates mm. people in the Caribbean, definitely in my country, who would not have been able to afford to get the benefit of this experience of international mm. collaborations and building um, alliances with students in other places. Um, it really has facilitated that um, opportunity, which otherwise they would not have been able to afford. And we look mm. forward the flow into the Caribbean and Latin America from Canada as well. I put a sure. chat, I put a chat my email if you need another mm -hmm. suggestion, orientation, how we are work, how we work with those institutions and Canadian institutions. And mm -hmm. try to see try to see Canadian institution because Canadian is Canadian have a good institution, the Latin Americans people and Caribbean people always see like a top university is only the best. Yes, we always we want to the top, but we have to see all the institutions because they are so strong in the things they are working. Mm -hmm. So I saw another question here. So for, for some contact information, so, so you're seeing my screen. So if, uh, if any of you are interested in learning more on some of the scholarships we talked about, I, I encourage you to visit our website at EduCanada. In addition, you can follow us on social media. And most importantly, if you are interested in joining the collaboration mission next year, whether it's Canadian or our Latin American Caribbean colleagues, please send our scholarship administrator an email at the scholarshipbourse.ca. Um, and you can be added to their mailing list and they'll send you an email for the next call, which I'll also paste on the chat here. Oh, and that's so I hope that answers your question. Yeah. While you're doing that, I'd love to also, I'm just now doing it. I mean, I'm, I, I hear I'm not that new anymore because I'm now in my second year. I'm a big old girl now in this. Um, but the, what I'm now doing is asking my students who go to the various universities to now have their, their heads of departments, their, their, their lecturers um, get in touch with me so that I can pa uh, parallel partner uh, their department chairs with the department chair for the area at NCU that they're studying so that we can now start to get more cohesive faculty-faculty dialogue and faculty-faculty exchanges and joint research. I think that I'm finding that very helpful right now. I've just started to do that and um, I'd encourage that for those who are considering um, pursuing the, the CM route. Don't be afraid. Don't think it's so difficult. Try to do 
participate in lab programs. You're going to see the benefits. You're going to see how you can share, how we can you learn about how in Canadian and lab programs mission going to going to show you how to push or motivate you to do something with Canadian University. Right. And you know, don't be shy, don't be shy. <laughs> Natasha, I, I'm also very excited that based on our relationship with one university, um, they recommended us to a university that is a college that is aligned with a particular industry in Canada when they were looking to expand and to secure professionals, train professionals. Um, one of our MOU, one of our agreement partners from the CM recommended us and we're now actively in discussion for something pretty major. And so the, the, the relationship grows and we cross-reference and, and help each other to recommend our various institutions in the Caribbean, Latin America and Canada to see how we can bless each other our countries. It's been a blessing. Um, yeah, absolutely. It seems like there's a little bit of a snowball effect once you get on the train. I know, uh, for example, in the 2019 mission, we had a great success story with the University of Saskatchewan and the uh, Universidad Católica del Mole in Chile, and they did the program. And then within a year, they they signed an MOU and they did a EA, English second language training program that they've been sending participants to and from. So, right. I mean, of course, I, I invite anyone that's interested to to express their interest. I know we only have a minute left, so. Uh, thank you, thank you again, Nadine and, and Maria Luisa, for being here today, uh, and, and all the time you've given me <laughs> for, for, for preparing this session. It's been greatly appreciated, and uh, I thank also all the participants in the audience. Uh, I hope to maybe see you on the next mission. Uh, merci beaucoup à tout le monde d'être ici aujourd'hui. Merci. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Alrighty. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah. Take care and enjoy the rest of your time at Kai. Bye-bye. Thank you.